A million and a half Rwandans, nearly 20% of the country's entire population, trying desperately to survive one more day in this relentlessly inhospitable corner of Zaire. It is not like the famine in Somalia. It is not like the flight of the Iraqi Kurds into the mountains of Iran and Turkey. It is not like the siege of Sarajevo or the plight of Bosnians displaced by that war. It is not like anything I've ever seen in 30 years as a reporter. It is, I think, the standard against which all future tragedies will be measured. For all up and down this road, this road that leads north from the border, there is madness and horror beyond telling, beyond belief. Humanitarian actions have a long, long history. But more recently, how we understand humanitarianism has been changing. A couple of events were very important in changing the way we think about humanitarian actions. After Rwanda was the first time when we really evaluated what the humanitarian action actually did and what the actual implications of that action were. Why was it important? Well, the humanitarian action in Rwanda highlighted a number of issues. Some humanitarian actors realised that they were actually giving aid, they were actually helping, feeding those that were then going back, once they were fed, once they'd recovered, to kill other people. And they started to question this. They started to question, should we give aid to everyone? Or should we be more selective in terms of who we give aid to? This led to some actors actually withdrawing for a while, drawing back and speaking out, something that humanitarian actors, in terms of principles, are not supposed to do. Humanitarian actors are not political, they're neutral, they're impartial. And this led to big changes in terms of how humanitarianism was seen. A second event was Kosovo. And here what we had was a very clear link between humanitarian interventions and military interventions. This is the notion of humanitarian bombing. To me, humanitarianism and bombing are completely different things. We do not bomb on humanitarian principles. However, the rationale was that in order for humanitarian actors to get through to those that needed military intervention, to stop those that were going to try and stop the actors deliver the aid. So we could see military and humanitarianism very much going together after Kosovo. And we've seen this on events again and again and again, how militaristic interventions are often now dressed up as humanitarian interventions. The language is the same. All these changes led to some humanitarian actors to question the principles of humanitarianism. What they suggested was neutrality, impartiality, were problematic in some contexts. They said that if you kept quiet, that was naive. What they suggested was, you have to be political. You have to understand who is doing what, and you have to act accordingly. The main change became this idea of witnessing. Now we've got some humanitarian actors that do say what they've seen. What this means is humanitarians are now less welcome in some areas. And indeed, some humanitarian actors have now become targets themselves. Earlier today, the international medical aid group Doctors Without Borders accused U.S. forces of deliberately bombing that hospital in Kunduz City. And this is about uh, respect for the, the laws of war and the international humanitarian law. And this, this attack was certainly a grave violation of those laws. And this has come about because of this change in the way that humanitarian actors act and the greater political actions of humanitarians. And what we have now then is this blurring of what humanitarianism means. We have many more humanitarian actions, but we have much more questioning around, are they humanitarian actions? Because what does humanitarianism mean in today's world? Often it does mean political, often it does mean military. The time frame has changed also. When we think about humanitarian actions, we think about them as short term. And that's the time frame many humanitarians act to. Short term, alleviate suffering, save lives, move in, move out. And we can understand that. This is about crisis. However, if we look at humanitarian actions, we actually see that 
the majority of money is spent on a very small number of countries, year in, year out. There's actually a small but stable set of countries that get most of the humanitarian aid. And the idea now is that humanitarian actions shouldn't just do no harm, which was the original idea, but now humanitarian actions should do good. In particular, humanitarian actions should build development. So the idea now is we have to think about the longer term consequences. And understanding now is in fact short term aid can do some harm. Who receives the aid? What aid they get? Who gives it can actually have longer term impact on those people receiving aid. For example, in Haiti after the earthquake, only women could go and get that food and there were military to protect the women who went to get that food. So the women got the food. But what about men? Only if they could get the food then from a woman could they actually access food. They couldn't access food in their own right. Do we think it might have done some harm to those men? Maybe not physically, but psychologically, who had already been battered by the earthquake themselves. All these issues have led to a big questioning around what humanitarian actions are, what are they trying to achieve, and what does humanitarianism really mean?